So, Sean, um, is, yes. is, is the sky falling? I mean, what, so what's going on with, with the market? I mean, I know, you know, this world that we live in now, it's a very fast, it's a changing world, right? Like nothing is static. So the market has shifted again. So, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about how has the housing market shifted in St. George. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, we're definitely sensing a shift for sure. Yeah. And so, you know, is it, well, I don't know. Is the sky falling? I guess you got to- You guys got to tune in. Check it out. <laughs> you got to figure it out. You got to tune in to find out. What's up, everybody? I'm Sean Dezod. And I'm Courtney Dezod, and we're with Keller Williams Realty right here in St. George, Utah. And if this is your first time to the channel, don't forget to press on the subscribe button, and don't forget to press on the bell so that you're notified every time that we upload a new video because we upload new videos every week. Yeah, and while we do love making these videos, I mean, how much we love them. I mean, it is fun to make Yes, them. we love making these videos. But Especially we are... when we have our kids involved. That, that is fun. <laughs> that is true. But we are licensed realtors. Although they, they don't like it that much. <laughs> Yeah, they don't like it as much as we love making them. But, yeah. you know, we have to they, bribe they'll, them. they'll grow to like them. No, we have to bribe them. <laughs> I missed you so much. That's my girl. Woohoo! We, we already know what their therapist is going to, you know, they're going to talk to their therapist about. This is true. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. having said all that, we are licensed realtors right here in the state of Utah. So while we love making these videos, our kids are not notwithstanding, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what we love more is to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're thinking about buying or selling a home in southern Utah, what you want to do is you want to give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back. So we're just going to give a broad overview first of just like the real estate market in general. Um, and then I just want to preface this. We're going to be largely, you know, focusing on what data is available. And I don't want to give too many predictions because I just feel like anyone who says, you know, oh, I can predict the future. This is what's going to happen. Nobody knows. Literally no Wait, one knows. You, you left your crystal ball at home. I know. I wish, I wish I could predict the future. Yes. Because if I could, I would not be sitting here right now. What? I would be a trillionaire. I'd be the world's first trillionaire. But with $10,000, we'd be millionaires. And I would but be still be doing these videos. <laughs> That's how dedicated she is. No, I would probably be in a villa in maybe like Italy or France and just, you know, enjoying my life. Not that I'm not enjoying my life now, but I still. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I could just see you having that itch and coming back and one of these doing these videos. <laughs> Not that St. George isn't a wonderful place to live, but if you're talking about, you know, what is your dream if you were a trillionaire? St. George is for me. <laughs> I think I would be living in the south of France. Right, you know what? <laughs> Teach their own. I mean, it'd be a little awkward, though, if you were in the south of France and I was in St. George. But Well, that's true. I guess that's why we would have a private jet in that point. <laughs> Whisk us around. That, that's true. That's true. So anyways, we're just going to try to give you some general data. And so generally speaking, if you just look at the real estate market as a whole over the United States, yeah. I mean, what has happened? I'd say there's been a, a, a pretty big shift probably over the last like, okay, first let's say, so we're, we're filming this early June. It probably won't get posted until like a week, week and a half later. So over the last, I'd say, I don't know, six weeks or so, how has there been like an overall market shift just over the entire country? It's been very, it's been interesting. I mean, so we, we're going from what was an insanely hot seller's market, right? So where things, it didn't matter what it was. It didn't matter what condition it was. It was on the market. It was gone, like gone, right? I mean, that's just like what the situation was. Now what we're seeing is that there's a little bit more hesitancy. Like, you know, people, a lot of people got priced out. I mean, obviously St. George went up 40% in the last year anyway. But then when you add to the fact that the interest rates have moved up, almost doubled also during that time frame. And in fact, my sister, she got a loan for a property that she bought in Park City. And she bought it, she got a 30 year fixed loan for 2.75%. Now you're like, you're like above 5% realistically speaking. And, and it seems like we're on our way up to a little bit more depending. So what, so what that means is, is that people's payment affordability it just, you know, with the housing going up as well as the payments going up, basically what you're getting is that your payment pretty much doubled in the last year, which is, you know, again, a tough pill to swallow and just kind of gave people a little bit of pause because it just moved up so fast so quickly. Yeah. But then, I mean, so prices have not 
No. It's funny because people often think, oh, so interest rates go up. That means that prices will go down. It's like a one-to-one ratio. So talk, talk about that. Yeah. So there's not – and it's not. I mean, we can't really say that – again, I can't say that prices won't go down, right? So this is not – this is not that kind of this is not that kind of prediction. We're just kind of like laying it out there, the data. You take from what you what you want to, because at the end of the day, like Courtney was saying, we're not fortune tellers. We cannot tell you the future. All we can do is present you with the data. We all we can say is that okay, the reason why we're seeing this, like we're seeing inventory building up, we're seeing a little bit of like more of like t- time on market before the property is absorbed and sold, is because, you know, again, it got a lot more unaffordable, you know, in a relatively short period of time. But just historically speaking, interest rates going up, that does not necessarily mean that prices are going down at the same rate. Yeah, right? actually, typically, historically speaking, it, it, ha- it doesn't have any ramification on it. So not to say that this wouldn't be the, one of those times, but interest rates moving up doesn't actually mean that. Because, again, a lot of people are looking at the situation as, you know, obviously, we're combating inflation or whatever. So real estate traditionally is an inflation hedge. So they're putting their money into real estate because at least – it has tended to hold its value well in these inflationary environments. Yeah, long term. Like yes. you think, oh, you know, in 20 years, at least it's an asset, right? And yeah. traditionally, real estate tends to go up, right? Yeah. And then as far as like and when, we're talking, when we're talking about what's going on right now, what we're seeing is supplying building up. We are seeing more homes hitting the market for sure. I mean, that is definitely happening, which is fantastic because honestly, I remember I was – we were looking – like, you know, we're just, you know, like, I just remember back in January, February, March, there was so few homes on the market. And, you know, the buyers we were working with going, can we just get some homes that are on the market, you know, like some yeah. homes to see and to, to, to hopefully buy? Now is that opportunity for a lot of people because they can finally get some, like, some options because there were none. I mean, mm-hmm. so it's, it's kind of awesome. So we're, we're seeing a lot more inventory hitting the market which is giving people a lot more options they can finally buy the house that actually more suits them rather than selling on something that they really were in love with, but they felt compelled to get that because they had to get something. So, okay, so here we are. This is uh, from our MLS. So this is the market summary for May of 2022. Yeah, so so the most recent month available. Even though we're in June, obviously it's early June, so they don't have statistics on June yet. Yes, although I can predict the statistics. Oh, me too. Yeah. So basically what we're seeing is that prices – are actually it's interesting so like let's take a look and see what's going on here so as as we're drawing like as you're noticing here fascinating so you're seeing the the listings here right so it was pretty high you know like this is about what october november or so so pretty decent amount of listings hitting right like about 900 ish listings on the market and then what you're seeing is that it dropped right this is what i was talking about like how low it got this was back in February, where it was just insanely low, it was like about 500, so almost half, 40 percent of like, you know, like yeah, you know, like dropped 40 percent from that October. Now, what we're seeing is is that, like, as we're kind of creeping up to April, May, like you're seeing, it, like, and again, this is not an unusual thing too. This is a lot of time, like this is the time that things sell, right? Yes, so it's more it's seasonal as well. As well, but not yes. that seasonal is not the only thing. Yes, we're definitely of seeing listings starting to hit the market more and more. And so we're seeing this discrepancy. And actually what's interesting here, if you notice, is that you have listings creeping up, but then home sales. But this is a trailing indicator. So this isn't – so active listings is a little, little bit more real time. Closed sales, like with this black line here, this is a, this is lagging. So this is kind of sh- yeah, well, showing a decline. But this is from – data from like two one to two months ago mm-hmm. yeah on properties that hit the market so we're kind of seeing that there's a bit of a spread going on between the properties that are so- sold and the properties that are getting listed so yeah. it is an interesting trend where it's tr- listings are trending up so that's adding more supply to the market right so and if uh demand is weakening then we're going to see properties sit on the market realistically for longer. Mm-hmm. So let's – and then – so as we're seeing actually listing so what, prices. So d- does this have days on market? How many days on market? What's the average days on market right now? So it's actually pretty low. Yeah. So it's still a seller's market, at least at this moment that we're speaking. Yeah. And so actually so you see like the days on market here was like 40 days, which is still pretty low when you're talking about, you know, like your traditional so what market. So what is tra- traditionally like a, a balanced market is 60 days on market? That is the uh, – absorption rate kind of thing so like but basically no actually like 60s even pretty hot like pretty much a seller's market too mm. it's when you get above that when it starts oh, to okay so when you get above so just to give you some because i think we we kind of are a little bit our our uh 
sphere of awareness is a little bit skewed. skewed yeah, because we've because, had two years, yeah. two and a half, three years, yeah. We're just so used to dealing with these markets where like, you know, it's so insanely hot and it's so insanely a seller's market that if it's becoming even a balanced market, people think, oh, the sky's falling. the sky is falling. And then you're like, no, actually, this is better for everybody, right? Like it, Exactly. It's not a good situation when you have just like when it's an insanely hot seller's market. I'll tell you this. I've had sellers be on the fence of selling because they couldn't find anything to buy. Mm -hmm. So it perpetuated itself, right? So like, because they can't find anything to buy, they don't put their property on the market to sell. And because they don't put their property on the market to sell, now we don't have that, well, there's a one more property that's not in the inventory of the market. Mm -hmm. So finally, this is gonna give people options. People can actually, God, God willing, buy and sell a home, you know, like what a concept. Mm -hmm. They could actually move up, move down, do move sideways, whatever they wanna do. They can actually find a replacement home, and therefore they could put their property in the market. And if their property in the market, then buyers themselves have more options, which is amazing. Again, I personally don't love an insanely hot buyer's market or seller's market. I don't like it when it's that skewed. The balance markets, there's there's movement. People can actually mm -hmm. do stuff, and they can find a right home that fits their needs. Yeah. And then so you're looking at the days on market though. So the day, the tail though is interesting. So in May, like so you saw how hot, like how much. Days on market, things were sitting at, you know, in January, February. Look at that. It's about half that now currently. So it's kind of telling you. So I think that don't read all the newspaper articles telling you the sky is falling because the data is telling us something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And in fact, even to illustrate this further, look at this. The, the price to sales ratio here, look at that. It's at 101%, which means that a home is typically selling for slightly above list price. Whereas, like, you know, back in December and all that stuff, it was selling at 3% below list price. So if a property was listed at a million dollars, it was selling at $970,000, right? So that's kind of what we're seeing. So, and then as we're going further down, let's kind of check out some more data. Now we got past the tables, let's kind of just look at some of these just data lines right here. So, right, like, so average list price, uh, let's actually average sale price, like, that's all we care about. So the average sale price is 640000 in May 2022. Last year was 503. So a nice bump in values for sure. And days on market, 18 days, give or take. So it's kind of maintained actually. So it's not like, again, it's not like these properties aren't selling. And actually another thing I wanna tell you too, is that when people see price reductions, like, oh, the prices are falling. That's not necessarily true. What we have right now is what we're seeing is that we're, we're seeing that the homes that have sold lately, that's, that's you know people thought that was a stepping stone. So if like a home in a neighborhood sold for five hundred thousand, and it was like let's say fixed up and nice, people thought okay my house that's not as fixed up can at least can sell for at least five ten five twenty right like that's what that's what their thought was like that was the next step up to a higher appreciation value. But we're seeing that five hundred thousand dollar level let's say currently being more of the ceiling and not the floor. So really. The market at present is showing us, it's kind of like stalling out, it's kind of plateauing as far as values are concerned. And so what we're seeing is that homes themselves aren't necessarily like gonna go up, up, up like 20% per like quarter. <laughs> like, you know, it's kind of like more or less flat, flattened out. So sellers that thought they could price their property at 520 are getting the real, getting, coming to the reality that, oh wait, you know what, my property's probably worth really closer to 500,000. So, so they're doing a price reduction, but that doesn't mean the property value went down, it just means that the seller was off when they priced their property. Yeah, they were unrealistic. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of unrealistic sellers right now who have not understood that the market has shifted. Yeah, and again, it's not, I mean, and part of it's obviously this is this happens pretty quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and again, it's hard to get people to think that old oh, things have changed, you know, have shifted. So, but you know, obviously it's, you know, if you're a seller, you're better off pricing it at market value and seeing what interest you get rather than pricing it high. Like I, I when I, when I encounter sellers going, I'm going to price it like, you know, five, five or 10% over market value because I want to have that cushion to negotiate down. That will, that leads to a, a, an environment where your property is going to sell on the market for way longer than it ought to. And then mm -hmm. you may get less ultimately than if you just priced it right from the get go. Yeah. And then, so what we're seeing here though, is that this so the average sales price is up, you know, significantly year over year. Days on market is still way low. Like, so it's really good, you know, you know, way low days on market. So just another th overall thing that we want to show you is that just because you hit a recession, that doesn't necessarily mean that housing is going to crash. You know, now we, I, not to interrupt, but we have to say that we're not even sure that we're hitting a recession. Yeah. There's 
there's people that are forecasting that we could be hitting a recession or whatever may or may not happen. But in the meantime, we still want to like address this point, though. Yeah. So, yeah, if you just go down, here are the last six recessions. And then obviously everyone thinks about 2008, especially if you're around our age group because we just – this was like a, a our really, first real recession. yeah it was like a foundational part of our you know development it was our really. great depression really <laughs> yeah like. and just the amount of carnage that happened in 2008 especially if you're like us and we were already had family in the real estate industry i mean it really affected like our families and so i feel like that a lot of people think oh you know a recession means housing is going to crash but the you know the 2008 recession that was caused by housing yes. right so it was a to- it was a very different each recession is created in its own unique way. Right? Yeah, and as you can see from this chart, four of the last six recessions did not lead to housing markets going down. So just so you know, I just to put that at, at ease, like just because we're getting a recession doesn't mean a housing prices are going to drop. So just, you know, it's it not a certainty nec- by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean. It, it, it doesn't really have any relation. Really. Yeah, and if you're actually, if you're wagering on it based off of this, you'd probably be wagering that's going to at least stay flat or go up. So if you actually look, do you want it? So we found an article about the Utah housing market. So about the Utah housing market, and it includes St. George. It's actually, so this is according to CoreLogic data, and all of the Utah housing market, the uh, various different regions, it's considered very low risk for price drops over the next year. So yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about this. Article. No, I mean it's just it's just good to hear because obviously they're saying Boise, you know Boise, which also was going to. They want to go down. They can they can show you the where they were showing. So this is all based off of CoreLogic data. So these are the ones that are high risk that they're predicting high risk for very high likelihood of price price drop. And and they're not saying not necessarily it can't happen. They're just saying it's low risk. Between 0 to 20% chance. Yeah, 0 to 20% chance is what they say for the St. George region. Um, And then just because they're just looking at, you know, the fundamentals of, you know, the St. George economy, you know. So how they decide this is assess factors like income growth, projections, unemployment forecasts, consumer confidence, debt to income ratios, affordability, mortgage rates, and inventory levels. So this is how they're deciding it. Um, CoreLogic is a big real estate data company, so. Yeah, and and the thing about St. George is that even though we see a ton of construction going on, it, you know, because of, let's say, the water supply issue and all that stuff, there is a, a limit to how much construction is going on, you know, going on here. There's so much more people wanting to move into St. George than what what yeah. the supply will allow for. For sure, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, it's just, like Sean says, if you if you think about economics, it's supply and demand. Like, that's literally the foundation of economics. Yeah, and when people freak out about more supply <laughs> in the market, you're like, yeah, that's a, that, there's more. But you have to put in the context of, like, how many people actually want to be here. So, yes. And again, I like more supply because I think that it's good to have pe- like people that have more options. I mean, you don't want people to be totally frustrated with their home search if to, when they're trying to buy something. Or like Sean said, I mean, if you want to move up, move down, move sideways, it's so hard to do that when there's just like nothing on the market. Yes. Okay, and then this is just the last little article that we're going to talk about. Um, basically, it's just saying like what Sean was saying before that, you know, sellers are having to maybe readjust their expectations about how much their house is really worth. Yes, exactly. Not necessarily that, you know, all of a sudden the market has crashed. It's that it's not going up at the same pace that it was before. Yeah, and these sellers that were front running the market going, okay, again, if my neighborhood was 500000 I'm pricing at five fifty. They're doing a price reduction, but that doesn't mean that the properties actually went down in value. Their home was never that worth that much to begin with. And they just they overshot the market. They were just hoping that the market was going to keep going up at this insane clip, mm-hmm. like in perpetuity. <laughs> and so yeah. realistically speaking, at some point it has to kind of at least take a breather. And I think that's what we're in. So the faucet is this the softening seen in these markets. And these red heart markets might mean the seller's expectations have not yet cut up with the realities of this rapidly shifting buyer-seller dynamic. Seems about right. Yeah. I mean, that's basically just what, you know. And then it says, across the U.S., it remains in seller's market territory. Yes. It's just the market is a little more buyer-friendly than we saw last month, and we expect that to continue. Yeah. So. And again, that's and that's all we can hope for is a market that is somewhat reasonable for both buyers and sellers. Yeah. I mean, it is just. I've been working with Sean in real estate for seven years, and it's just, like, kind of crazy. He, he would always say, oh, this market is crazy, this market is crazy. It's never not been crazy over these last seven years. And Sean's been in real estate for since he was 18, so. A little he, babe. <laughs> he's seen so much. The real estate market is just crazy. Yeah, but at least it seems like, finally, it's not 
Like we might be in those level where it's less crazy, where buyers can buy and sellers can sell. I mean, and then again, at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for. Oh, and then there's look at that ad for the Tua Can Amphitheater. Oh, I, I keep telling Sean that we need to buy tickets. I want to see Mary Poppins. Uh, yeah, we will. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> so that's it. That's our video. And if you found this video useful or helpful in any way, don't forget to press on the subscribe button and don't forget to press on the bell so you're notified every time that we upload a new video. And while we do love making these videos and we love making them like weekly, what we do, we are licensed realtors in the state of Utah. So what we love more is to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in Southern Utah, what you want to do is you want to give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back. Oh, 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 oh,